Hey guys, and welcome to Quality Shot. I'm really excited to be joined by Masood Abdullah, making his pro debut tomorrow. Um, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm really good, I'm really good. Um, exciting times ahead. You know, you've been in the local hotel and now you've got your pro debut tomorrow, you now on a Frank Warren Queensbury show. Um, how are you feeling? I feel good. Honestly, I can't wait to get this over and done with. Um, it's been a long time. Uh, long time. I mean, I signed my contract back in October 2019. And uh, yeah, I've been waiting for ages. There's been a few cancelled fights and uh, finally we're here. So super happy. Yeah, exactly. As you said, it's um, you know, it could have been a huge card to be on with um, you know, Carl Frampton and Jamal Herring. And then obviously now uh, Anthony Kakesi versus uh, Liam Woodstock off because of uh, COVID, which is just causing carnage at the moment isn't it and injuries etc as well but um it's still a, a really really good um card to be on especially for for a first fight um how's the preparation and everything been given the current climate and everything and as you said it's been moved back a couple of times has it been all okay i mean it's been okay so far um with the gym's been shut it's been a little bit hard just because we only get a few hours in the gym um and then that's it but aside, aside from that, everything's been everything's been great. I've been getting some top top notch sparring. Uh, again, been prepping for this since since May, since June. So I'm more than ready, and on weight, easy. I made weight super easy. So yeah, yeah. It's like a long long time coming, isn't it? I think probably. Um, is it? I'm assuming it's a case of as well. You obviously have focus on this fight, but you really want to get it under your belt and just start. You know start that momentum rolling isn't it i'm assuming that's the case yeah i mean my objective for this year was to well you know since i signed was by now to have at least five six six fights but you know finally i can make my debut hit the you know hit, hit the scenes and make make a ranking for myself make a name for myself but yeah just super happy about that yeah 100 percent. are you fighting at super featherweight uh, for this fight would be super feather. Um, next one I'll drop down lower just because I'm eating like four or five meals a day and I'm okay. in super feather, so very easy. Oh, wow, okay, yeah, so down to featherweight yeah. as well. That's fantastic. Um, no, yeah. that's really good. Um, and just give us for viewers as well who maybe are not super familiar with yourself yet, um, give us a little bit of background into how you got into the sport, um, and you know, your kind of journey so far into pro boxing. <laughs> Okay, so I started boxing mainly because of my younger brother. Uh, I did kickboxing, he did boxing, and I think he, this was um, after university, he came up to me and he goes, what, do you think you're tough? Because we're super competitive. I mean, uh, insanely competitive. And he goes, what, do you think you're tough? I go, yeah, hell yeah, I'm tough. What, what do you want to do? He goes, let's go outside and spar. And again, we've got enough equipment, we, we both compete. So we went outside and we boxed in the garden, and my mom was watching. And I remember this kid whooped the shit out of me. He beat the crap out of me. I'm talking about he dazed me, wobbled me. And I remember going, shit, is this, is this what boxing is about? This young kid's beating me up. And uh, as time went on, I went, you know what? After my degree, I'm going to join his club. And I'm going to, you know, you, quit, you fall apart. But as time went on, I go, I'm going to join his club. I'm going to bond with my younger brother and learn how to box. Because my kicking was good, but my boxing was trash. And yeah, went down, went down to his club, started boxing. The more I went, the less, you know, the less he started showing up. And then um, they asked me, do I want to compete? I go, yeah, put me in. And next thing I know, I'm winning loads of fights. I'm getting fights after fights. And, and yeah, things were looking good for me. Nice. Is your, is your brother still box, or he kind of just fell out of love with it a little bit? Uh, he, he fell out of it. Like, uh, he doesn't box. He hasn't boxed in a while, to be fair. It's been, it's been a long time. But yeah, it's just me that boxes now. Mm, nice. So that's um, that's quite cool, isn't it? You've got that a uh, competitive brotherly nature. Does he ever come up to you sometimes and think, you know, I can take him on? <laughs> Do you think? All, all the time, all the time, without failure. Uh, <laughs> I mean, just just before I was making my way to the hotel, because he, he walked past me, he'd done a little faint on me, and he goes, you know what? I'll leave you. I don't want to hurt you before your fight. But that's brothers, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, 100%. Um, that's so funny, actually, you talk about a brotherly 
brotherly love, let's say, uh, which is quite cool. Um, what what weight was he actually? Was he a similar weight to you though? As uh, similar weight, yeah, because he's yeah. taller than me. He's taller than me by quite a bit. Mm. But um, I think when we done our sparring, because he was still growing, mm. uh, when we done our sparring, I was maybe like two, three kilograms heavier. Okay, okay. And yeah, and then the guy just suddenly shot up like he's nearly six foot now. Mm. But yeah. Nice. Well, last I mean, last <laughs> April you won the national championships, and you know, which is formerly the ABAs, which everyone knows is is uh really prestigious especially uh, in the amateurs as well um coming through now you what made you decide you wanted to turn pro at this stage you're 26 so you know the same age as me we're both really young super young <laughs> what made you think actually you want to turn pro um at this stage one second no let problem. me just send sorry about that no someone was giving me a call um I wanted to turn pro after my, I think it was 20th fight, 18th, 20th fight. That was my objective because I'm not going to do anything half-hearted. And that's when I made the decision that, you know what, I'm not going to work because I used to work in the finance sector. And then I moved to the sales and then said, you know what, this corporate world, world isn't for me. I'm just going to box, see where it takes me. If I can't make in boxing, um, I'll see what else is out there. But there's no way I'm going back to the corporate world. And yeah, after my 18th or 20th fight, I decided that I wanted to turn pro. And I said that I was going to give the elites a shot and then see where it takes me from there. And next thing I know, I'm winning tournaments and uh, doing really well. So, so yeah, got very fortunate. Mm, that's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I guess um, like that's always something you can do when, you know, when you're really successful and you're retired. If you, well, I'm sure you have, you'll be... You know, established and made yourself enough money, you don't even need to go back into the corporate world. Probably way behind you now. Honestly, I don't want to go back. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, I that's, can tell. that's not, that's not, I don't think that's for me. I, you know, much rather, you know, if I can't, if I can't pursue boxing, I kind of want to pursue something within boxing. Yeah. And yeah. No, that's, that's really good to hear. So you've got the, uh, the boxing fever, I guess. And, um, was there like a specific moment? So I guess when you said that you had that spar with your brother after that, did that kind of ignite the fire to say, actually, I want to do this. I want to improve uh, in, this, in this aspect. Because you're doing kickboxing before. But what yeah, made you I mean, think, that, actually, I want to transition from kickboxing to boxing? I mean, the only reason why I boxed, in all honest to God, is I was going down the route of MMA. So I was doing jiu-jitsu, I was kickboxing, and... You know, kickboxing, you don't earn a lot of money unless you're a high-level, you know, glory fighter. And, um, and yeah, so I said, I'm going to box, get my hands better. I was grappling at the same time. I was doing different different art forms and uh, just kind of got stuck into boxing. Once I had one fight, it was just never-ending. So I had fights after fights after fights where I didn't have enough time to stop and think about where I was going. I was just enjoying the journey. And then after a little while, I went, you know what? I'm doing well. Let me stick to this. Let me see what, let me see what happens. Nice. That sounds good. That sounds good. And you um, obviously signed with Frank Warren, who's a Hall of Famer promoter. Well, it's an amazing outfit to be, to be with um, and pr promotional stable as well. Um, I think I saw that you had a couple of, you know, you talked to him as well. And, and how was it talking to him? Were you a bit, were you a little bit starstruck or a little bit, you know, like, oh, wow, you know, this is this, no, I've been signed for this huge platform. Um, you know, you're going to be on BT as well. Now you obviously are signed with Queensbury. Um, and you kind of just take it all in and just... What, what was it like, the kind of feeling you got? Nothing, no feelings. I mean, he's, he's just an ordinary guy, isn't it? Just like um, I've met loads of, loads of famous boxers and loads of other people. And for me, it's, it's just like meeting another guy. He just said hello to him. Asked him about his days, and that was it. <laughs> Literally, nothing, nothing changed. But, yeah, that yeah. make that makes sense. And what do you what do you know about your um your opponent as well? Uh, he's a nice guy. I spoke to him. Um, yeah, I was speaking to him, but we were both wearing masks. I I recognized him immediately. Um, you know, just small talk and all that kind of stuff. And then he asked me, he goes, "Oh, who are you fighting?" I looked at him. I go, "You." <laughs> We we laughed we laughed for a little bit and then yeah he walked off but he's a really nice guy he's had loads of fights um, he's only been stopped twice 
And one of the fights that he's been stopped is um, what do you call it? It should it shouldn't have been stopped. Like, but he's a very well conditioned well conditioned boxer. That's it. He's mm. nice. I mean, he, yeah. No, I haven't seen many people hurt him. Yeah, which is a good. I guess that's a very good uh, test. First up, isn't it? As someone who's yeah. durable, who's going to give you rounds as well, potentially. Um, which we are, which is good, I think, to to have in the bag. Um, is it a four rounder? It's a four rounder. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, that'll be good as well um, to kind of see where you're at and I guess build on that. Well, what's your goal then for the rest of the year? How many fights are you wanting to have uh, for the rest of this year? If they give me 20 fights, I'll take 20 fights. I just want to have as many fights as possible. I want to get out there and, you know, just keep improving and staying as active as possible. Because amateurs, I had literally 34 fights in two and a half years. My last year, I had 14 fights in four months. And now I've been inactive for nearly two years. I want to, you know, I want to be active again. I want to continuously compete, continuously improve. Because, you know, it's good sparring, it's good training, it's good hitting bags, but it's nothing like, you know, competing. And I just want to get back in back in there and start competing properly. Yeah, exactly. That That's so funny. I think a lot of people, um, when I ask them if they're either making their debuts or, you know, they, they may be kind of early, earlier on in their career even, they're very much like I'll take as many fights as you know, um, as you'll give yeah. me, uh, which is which is really uh, which is quite cool to hear actually. Um, and obviously th- there's that hunger there, isn't there? Um, which is really good to have for sure. Um, yeah, it's good though. I mean, there's you know that there's a couple of other fights on the card which are obviously a bit more high, high higher profile guys who have obviously a bit more established. Like Tommy Fury, obviously, is on the card who obviously. His brother's Tyson Fury, which has, I think, helped his stock as well. And he's making his way up, though. He's very early in his career as well. Um, how do you think he's going to be fighting with no crowd? Do you think it's going to make a difference? Or considering that, I guess, in the amateurs, you probably had a lot of fights with no crowd anyway. Um, uh, is, it just, is it just going to be pretty, like, normal for you? I mean, I, I don't know. Never fought with no crowds. I mean, I was quite fortunate that in the amateurs, I always had um, a few people around me, a few friends, a few supporters, something like that. So I was very fortunate. And even if I fought away, I had, um, you know, I had I had my friends come in and watch me fight. And I had my teammates with me and everything. So I don't know. This will be an experience. And it's an experience which I want to go through because how many people can say I fought with no crowd? I mean, only a handful of people can actually say that, and I want to be one of them people. Yeah, that's true, actually. Um, that's really cool that you managed to always have support of the amateurs, because I've heard some people say that, oh, in the amateurs, maybe they didn't, but it's amazing that you have that support um, there always, which is cool. And maybe, I guess, with no crowd, in, in a way, it, it kind of will help you be more tuned in to the fight. Um, and more, obviously, there's no distractions, potentially. And um, apparently, I heard someone say that you can almost you can hear the your opponent's breathing a lot more than obviously you could normally, uh, which is quite yeah, I interesting. Mean, I mean, it's it's just like sparring. You can <laughs> you can hear them breathe. You can hear the punches thump thump thump. You know, bounce out their head or stomach. Uh, it'll be interesting. I mean, in terms of focus, I I do better if um, I have a group of people around me and we can just joke, laugh, and you know, mm. not focus so much on the nervous tension that's there. Okay, but we'll see, we'll see. This is all an experience. This will be, it'll be, it'll be something good. Hopefully. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it will be. And I, I, I guess as you've uh, gone through your boxing journey, are there any specific fighters that you've grown up thinking, oh, no, they're amazing. Actually, I'd, I'd like to take bits and pieces from them. Or you thought, oh, actually, they're someone that I can look to as, oh, that's kind of my hero in boxing. Uh. I haven't really looked up to anyone, I'm going to be honest. Um, getting into boxing, I didn't really watch a lot of boxing. Uh, when I was competing as an amateur, again, I did everything so unorthodox. I didn't train like a boxer. Um, I didn't do any runs or anything. So not really anyone I can look up to. I just, I don't know. I just listen to advice and go out there and try and do my best. But yeah, that's it. Nice, okay. That's interesting. 
because you know, it's funny because you always hear people they'll, they'll say you know Nassim Hamed or you know Roy Jones Jr or these people and they'll, they'll talk about them because I guess when they're younger they used to watch them or maybe there's a, they're growing up but I guess as you said you come from a more unorthodox um, kind of yeah. way into boxing so it's a bit different I mean I didn't box till I was uh, till I was 23 years old so so for me it was it was a completely different scene I didn't really the only boxing matches I saw was like the main events like Floyd Mayweather Manny Pacquiao Miguel Cotto some, someone like that but didn't really care about boxing much. I just got into it because, you know, I wanted to, I followed my younger brother and I, you know, got caught up in the, in the moment and that's it. Yeah, that's interesting. And I guess then, lastly, what's your, what's your goals then? Uh, do you have set goals? Like as, when you turn pro, were you like, do you have a tick list where you think, I want to achieve X, Y, and Z in, in a year, five years in my career? Or is it just take one fight at a time and just see how it goes? I mean, I mean, I'm not, I, I understand boxing. Boxing is not a very, it's not a sport you want to be in for a very long time. You're taking punches to the head. Even if it's not in a fight, you're going to be doing it in sparring. You're constantly making weight. Your body goes through changes. It's not a sport you want to stay in forever. And um, again, me being at the age I am, I don't want to hang about for too long. I want to go in, have as many fights as possible. Um, as in a short period of time as well. So I w- within two, three years, I want to fight for the British title. No doubt, that's that's where I want to be. And then within five years, I want to obtain the world title. Like, uh, I don't want to hang about like most people do. I mean, I know someone who's, um, who's had how many fights? Like four or five fights within two, three years. That's definitely not me. I mean, um, and I want to find out if this sport is for me. And again, I, I believe I'm made for the sport. So let's let's see what happens. Mm, okay, that's interesting. No, I think um, what's the saying? It's uh, get in, get rich, get out, isn't it? Um, so I mean, again, this I come from an amateur route where you don't earn any money. You do because you love it. Yeah, my, my, money's a bonus. Um, but yeah, I just I just love the sport. That's it. Okay, so for you, it's about just the enjoyment from from boxing, competing at the high level and really pushing yourself and, and potentially building some type of legacy then, is it? That's it. That's it. And plus, I really enjoy this. Like, that's that's why I do it. <laughs> I mean, I mean just, we, we didn't earn any money, anything. And if I wanted money, I would have continued working. But, um, but yeah, I'm fortunate enough that I'm with a very good promoter who's actually going to put me out in fights and who's actually been looking for fights for me. So, um and I'll be earning a little, a little bit of money. So it's, it's good. It's good. I'm in a very good place right now. And hopefully yeah. within the next coming, you know, coming years, I'll be in a better place. Yeah, 100%. I mean, especially considering a lot of people haven't actually um, been able to get out on shows. Um, people who are established, yeah. you know, who have, who have challenged for world titles or British titles or European titles and they haven't been out for a year or so. I mean, we saw Josh Warrington, obviously, um, who is in the division that you're going to be going down to uh, gets, you know, he was out for a, what, a year and a year and a bit and uh, then eventually lost in a, in a really real surprise fight. Did you watch that by any chance? That fight? I did. Yes, I did. What do you think? I mean, the Mexicans are no joke. Uh, you don't mess with them. And um, it's weird, man. They, Josh Warrington came in with a game plan and I think, when he got hit and he got dropped, I don't think he recovered completely. So um, it's it's hard it's hard to it's hard to you know base anything just because he had a bad night, and you know he's going to have a rematch. Let's see what happens in the rematch. But that fight was it was a tough fight. Yeah, he it didn't was, really wasn't change it? his game plan. Yeah, he didn't really change his game plan. He just he wanted to ball with him, and I guess that was the Mexicans. You know that. That was Lara's game. You know, he was better at brawling than than Josh Warrington, and he didn't really change it up. He didn't try and establish distance or anything. He just went in to give four straight away. But yeah, I agree. I agree. It was a it was a massive, massive uh, shock. Even I think it it almost reminded me a little bit of the AJ Ruiz um, fight, just because you know Josh Warrington was I think looking towards fighting someone like Gary Russell Jr. Um, or you no know, Can after. And obviously at that time, Anthony Joshua was looking to fight John T. Wilder. And they weren't, I think both of them probably 
weren't massively excited for the fight in front of them. And then there's that stumbling block, right, which uh, eventually ended up being more of a hurl than they expected. And say that loss like that is like a huge upset. And I I was watching it live and I was like, what is going on? Um, just kind of came out of nowhere and really Laura did I really know much about him not really I kind of I've heard a little bit about him but I can honestly say I hadn't watched much of him um, if any so just to see him fight and he's only 22 as well and he's fought since he was like 15 a lot of these Mexicans start so early which is just crazy so yeah, yeah. amazing um, amazing stuff and the division the featherweight division is there's a lot of lot of uh, really good fighters around so um, yeah yeah, that'd be amazing for you as well after this fight to move down to there. At, at featherweight and super featherweight, to be fair, um, as well. Like Bachelt fought Valdez recently. Um, Oscar Valdez at super featherweight, which was a really good fight as well. Cool. Um, is there anything you want to touch upon before we wrap up? You've done your COVID test, haven't you? So you're all, you're all fine, oh, perfect, all, all cleared. cleared. Yep, yeah? all cleared. Um, everything's good, but no, nothing, nothing, nothing extra to add. Perfect. And your way in? Uh, weigh-in is today in a few hours to be fair it's at 2 o'clock fantastic and again I've been walking around fight weight for the past 2-3 days so I'm good nice and comfortable that's, yep, that's always good isn't it <laughs> yeah <laughs> cool and uh, do you want to tell people where they can see you tomorrow uh, it's on BT Sports uh, I think it starts at 7 or 7.30 but yeah that's it yeah Really good. No, I look forward to seeing you out there as well. Is there anything you want to touch on before we wrap up? Nope, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Perfect. Thank you, mate. No worries at all. No worries at all. Really nice chatting as well. And uh, all the best for tomorrow. Uh, good luck. You know, I hope everything goes smoothly. And uh, let's maybe catch up on maybe after or, or maybe later on um, in the month or year as well. And we can definitely have a chat. But yeah, really nice speaking to you. All the best you for too, your mate. debut. You too, mate. Thank you so much. Have Appreciate a good one, it. mate.